self-publishing is hard and confusing, but also immensely rewarding, and it's kind of fun to see something that only created in your head go out into print and people actually reading it. There's a lot of people self-publishing for all sorts of different reasons, and a lot of us, them, are making the same mistakes. So many mistakes. As someone who has self-published three books in the last year, I kind of have a little bit of knowledge about self-publishing, which I am going to give to you because information is power. These are the top six mistakes that people who self-publish their book make. Number one, not hiring a structural or general editor. For me, this was the biggest plus point for self-publishing is I didn't want anybody messing with my stuff. And a lot of my friends who've gone with traditional publishers complain day in and day out about how their editor is cutting all the good stuff out and completely ignoring their suggestions. The author a lot of the time doesn't agree with the stuff that the general editor is changing. And when you self-publish, you get to do whatever you want because literally you can do whatever you want. That being said, you really should hire a structural or a general editor. Stuff that makes sense in your mind might not make sense to everyone else. I didn't hire one per se. I outsource a lot of my stuff to my blog because that's how I got started and that's where I got the editorial book itself. I have published two comic books, my third one. I'm waiting for the proof right now. Yay! Both times I sent kind of the rough draft to 20 or 30 of my most avid blog readers and said like, hey, can you make some changes? Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. In fact, the entire structure for my second book came from some people wanted it organized by seasons. And I was like, what? That's ridiculous. But since so many people had said it, I organized it by seasons and that ended up being super popular. So apparently I have no idea what I'm doing. Even if you don't agree with everything that your general or your structural editor says, you should still hire one because they know stuff. Number two, about the same, you need to hire a copy editor, a line editor. And this is coming from someone who has the worst grammar and the worst spelling. I've recently discovered I don't know how to spell avocado and I've spelled it wrong in every single one of my comics. And you'd be surprised by how many times I use avocado in a comic. There are a lot of people who are grammar Nazis. I am not one, I don't really care. But most of the three star reviews that I've gotten on Amazon have been because uh, my book hasn't been edited well enough. I'm outsourcing to everyone on my blog and uh, I've paid a couple family members to go through and tear apart my book and fix all the grammar. Hiring an editor can be expensive. There are cheaper alternatives. You just gotta really, really look for them. Number three, choosing not to buy a barcode or an ISBN. And I get it because barcodes are 25 bucks a pop. ISBNs are one for 125, 10 for 250. It's expensive. And if this book is just a hobby, a lot of people don't feel the need to buy one. But if you let Amazon or CreateSpace or the print on demand company or the vanity press that you're using sign an ISBN to your book, they control some of the rights. There's a chance that your book could go like, boom, super popular. And I mean, it's a small chance, but it's a chance. And so if that's the case, you really ought to have an ISBN. I mean, that's the reason you're self-publishing in the first place. So you can control the rights and do whatever you want. You gotta have that ISBN. Uh, you can buy ISBNs and barcodes at www.myidentifiers.com. And then you can link them together. It's all self-explanatory. It's really not that hard. Number four, skimping on cover design. I judge a book by its cover. I like to say that I don't, but I really do. And other people judge the book by its cover too. The cover is your chance to be like, hey guys, you should buy this. This book is interesting. Don't mess it up. You should, if you if you are not a designer, if you don't do art, pay someone to design your book cover because I mean, you can get it for as cheap as $50. Since I was doing comic books, I just went ahead and designed my own cover. This was my first book. I really didn't know what I was doing. My second one, Turn out maybe a little bit better. I don't really know uh, what's good or not. I haven't had anybody complain about the cover. CreateSpace is the print on demand company that I use and they offer actually a very affordable price package. If you want to have someone else design your cover for you and a lot of my friends have done that. Number five, inefficient or bad marketing promotion. When you are self-publishing, you are your own everything. You can't just be like, hey world, this is my book. Please buy my book. It's listed on Amazon. Okay, I tried my hardest. I guess it's just not working. No. <laughs> That, no, no, you can't do that. You've gotta get out there and you've gotta be promoting the crap out of that book. And it's awkward and I hate promotion. And I think it's just, but you can do it in ways that aren't awkward and aren't stupid. In fact, I started YouTube to promote my first book. It was when I was gonna do a Kickstarting campaign, which ended up getting uh, funded about $14,000 for my first comic book. And I include a short five to seven second 
clip at the end of all of my videos saying like, if you like this video, you should buy my comic books. And that's drumming up a surprising amount of sales. If you're writing a book, you should definitely have a blog. Uh, my blog is a lot bigger than my YouTube channel. I've been blogging for about three years now. Um, and that's still where most of my sales come from. And I have something in the little sidebar like, hey, buy my book. And at the bottom of every comic that I draw, I have like, you can buy my book on Amazon if you like this. Uh, and that's a very non-invasive way to market your book. You can also do guest posts. For my first book, I did about 30 or 40 guest posts on all sorts of other blogs. It didn't drum up as many sales as I'd hoped, but it's better than nothing, especially if you don't have a thriving blog or YouTube channel. You can also start writing for a big website, um, usually paid, yay, and then include a link to your book in your bio. So you can link to your blog or YouTube channel or your book on Amazon. Uh, and if you want to know how to get your book on Amazon, you can check this earlier video just click somewhere in here that I did on how to self-publish your book. You can also um, send out press releases. For my first book, I sent out about 100 press releases. Only five of them actually got published, but that was my first time ever doing press releases, so I didn't really know how to do that. For my second book, I sent out 10 press releases and eight of those got published, so I kind of sort of got my shit together. Basically, the best way to promote is to provide something useful for free and then at the end plug your product. And so for me, I write blog posts and a lot of my blog posts are um, like how to live in Japan or just funny musings about stuff. And then at the end, I will link to my uh, my book on Amazon or I do YouTube videos. And then at the end, I'm like, hey, if you like these videos, buy my book. The people appreciate that. And a lot of time people want to support their artists. And I get a lot of messages from people that are like, hey, normally I'm not interested in comic books, but I love your blog. I love your YouTube channel. So I wanted to support you and I bought your books, which to is like yay a note on promotion don't be shameless and annoying about it i know a couple people that put on twitter or on facebook every single day like hey buy my book they're not providing anything new or useful they're just always like hey i'm tweeting it 10 times a day why aren't people buying my book that's that's not how it works you need to provide some sort of service otherwise you're gonna lose all your followers and so if you have a blog and every single thing is like buy my book buy my book buy my book and all you're doing is spamming sites like buy my book buy my book that's that's annoying and that will turn people off your idea. Just be careful with your marketing. Uh, and then last but not least, one of the huge mistakes that a lot of self-published people, myself included, make is that they assume because the book is self-published, it's not a real book. And I don't care what other people say. If they say self-publishing is this or that. Self-publishing, you get to keep the vast majority of the profits. You get to control everything you want. You get to do whatever sort of promotion you want. Give away the book for free or send copies to whoever you want. You get all the power in this. It is totally a real book. You, you poured your heart and soul into it. You are allowed to be proud. Hey, that right. The fact of the matter is these two books support my husband and I here in Japan. We spend all day writing and drawing and exploring and doing all this fun stuff. You say you're a real author and you have some book listed up on Amazon and you're selling it when you give speeches everywhere. It's a real book. Screw everyone else. So if you have any other huge mistakes that self-publishers make, uh, put that in the comment section and maybe I'll do another video. I don't know. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and if you're self-publishing, good luck. Bye. Self-publishing. Since you do it all on your own, you only have yourself to blame when it all fails horribly.